Well, good morning. Hey, I'm going to show you a couple things here. Now, this, uh, I've showed this before. I sold this valve grinder, and I'll tell you why. I don't want to do uh, that many cylinder heads that I need this. But I did this for another shop some years ago. And what they had on here, this is a Sioux valve grinder, is they had what they called a ball chuck. It was just a piece of crap. And uh, it, if the valves uh, would run a thousandths, that's good. And what I did here is I took and sawed this off. And I did this many years ago in uh, 1999 is when I did this. February 1999 and I sawed that thing off and then I built this whole front part right here you see this piece here and then there's this piece here and that's a just true and so this this is a separate piece and what I did is this is a Ericsson call it Chuck extension uh, 100 collets It's uh, the size I think 9 sixteenths and maybe goes up to but anyway the guy I did this for wanted to be able to get more behind the valves Okay, and so but what I'm trying to tell you is that you can do this on anything and uh, a lot of uh, YouTube channels and stuff uh, show adapting uh, ER type chucks to little mini lathes and stuff and having them adjust to just like this okay so uh, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna make a call it chuck for this drill press here ER40 and it's gonna adjust like this so I can get away uh, without using floating reamer ho holders in some instances and other things where you want the tool to run true it, it, it's really pretty cool if you can do that so anyway I'm kind of moving stuff around here and uh, adjusting to a, a, a different mode that I'm going to do. This is a great old uh, um, valve grinder, but uh, I have a more accurate valve grinder inside, and I'll show you that in a second. Yeah, yeah making great progress on this uh, press here. It was suggested. I can't remember who, but it was a good idea just to drill some uh, holes overlapping this piece that's loose this wheel just spins on this so I can just put grub screws in and lock that down you can see this uh, press at one time had been knocked over see the weld in here and I think that caused that uh, looseness <laughs> I'll get it cleaned up and buffed up and stuff and it'll look pretty good kind of hide that stuff now, uh, oh, the press itself, now, I, I did a short video showing the pump there, but I got that off. Um, this is all okay here. This, this, there's no problem in there. And uh, so I'm going to restore this press. I really need it for the work I'm going to be doing. Okay. Yeah, I got the pump right here on the floor. And we'll get back onto that chuck thing here. Okay, I've shown this call it nose uh, I uh, constructed. I didn't invent it. It's, it's, it's actually a copy of a uh, CNC call it chuck. Uh, I think the, uh, when the CNC uh, designers had to, uh, for whatever reason, adapt 5C call its to new machines, they go, hey, we got to make that adjustable to make them run true. And, you know, a lot of collets run true, some don't run true, it's, I don't know, you know, but uh, if they don't run true, you can build, <laughs> you can build a chuck to make them run true. Like that grinder out there, you know, it had to meet a speck better than a thousandths of an inch, so you put it an adjustable uh, um, work uh, holding chuck. 
on that. And here's one I built for the Moore jig bore. And uh, I built it on this machine here. And it's got a rather difficult thread there on the end. And, uh, but anyway, this is a uh, adjustable for run out chuck. This one's got a um, Ericsson 180 double angle call it chuck extension pressed into this front part. I machined on this leg that is bolted to the back part I made in this leg. And in fact, with these screws here, I got six of them on this thing. And I can adjust a reamer or something to run absolutely true in the more trick boring machine. So you can um, take any spindle and uh, make that happen. Now, one fellow I know, I thought this was interesting, this tool and cutter grinder. And I've got uh, three drop chuck with a 5C shank. I've talked about how I set this thing up and it's adjustable. So you can start with a machine with an adjustable chuck and that's your four jaw chuck. So with your four jaw chuck, you can make all of the things I just showed you, okay? And then you can uh, adapt it to many machines. And uh, you know, you can get uh, some pretty hard 4140 and, and make your uh, tooling out of that. That's what this, uh, all these chucks are here. It's all uh, pretty hard that I uh, machine this out of. And uh, so if you got a difficult spindle, uh, like the, the fellow I know got this uh, mono set, and <clears throat> those are expensive, and the, and the tooling is hard to find, and they got all these. Uh, really high dollar collets and stuff like that and he was missing a couple of them and he took a look at the price of stuff and what he ended up doing is piecing all that stuff out on ebay that he didn't need for that uh cincinnati monoset tool cutter grinder and he adapted an er40 <laughs> collet chuck to the work head and it took care of absolutely everything you needed, and he made it adjust true. So, you know, I, if you got a difficult spindle or something like that, there, there's ways around that, and you can get, get your work uh, running true. And I'm, uh, one of the things, I don't want to do very many, I, I don't want to get back into cylinder heads. It, it, that's really, too hard to work for me, you know. I'm, I'm going to fix things that uh, uh, other people might uh, have have difficulty with. And the tool and cutter grinder is just really a good place to uh, to start on that. And I got uh, I was thinking about the dilemma with the Monarch 10 double E's and the uh, uh, metric threading and. Uh, the alternatives um, is like, you know, the hard inch style, but if that's not a heavy enough machine, you know, you can look at, uh, like on uh, eBay, there's a Shoplin uh, 102 feet air. Don't look at those square things. Uh, the uh, old 102s, uh, are metric only. And a shop I knew uh, years ago had the old uh, Monarch 10 double E's that didn't cut metric threads, and that's what they had that machine to uh, cut uh, metric threads. So if I was uh, looking for something, you know, uh, like a inch metric uh, 10 double E that's very difficult to find, very expensive. Uh, there's alternatives, you know. You can still uh, have your 10 double E and uh, find something uh, else uh, 
uh, to cut your metric frets with. That's, that's probably just about the best plan. Okay, I'll probably think of another thing or two. And I hope you're having a great, I think this is Monday. <laughs> okay, I've been real busy. I'm cleaning my basement and uh, making room for a little grinding area down there. I think that'll be pretty handy for me. And plus getting the shop press going, that's very important. Okay, I'll be back. Hey, I noticed that uh, um, other people that do uh, restoration work, uh, quite a few of them use these uh, World War II era machines. And uh, if you're not in the most uh, critical hurry, hammering out parts, uh, these things are more than adequate, I think. This, uh, this old axle, and it's really working out great. That's a lot of fun. The, <laughs> It's just a little slow on the shifting. <laughs> See me shift this thing. But, you know, that's not that big a deal. Uh, its benefits uh, outweigh its uh, faults, I think. And uh, it's, it's working real good. There's a little bit more muddy stuff coming out of those uh, cleaned passages, but it's, it's clearing up and boiling everywhere. Looking good. So anyway, I've got the, uh, uh, my only adjust true chuck I have for this right now. And I probably don't really need anything else because they use four jaws and stuff. But it's nice to have a six jaw for thin wall stuff. And of course, this one is, uh, is an old buck uh, adjust, adjust true. So this adjust true feature is is a nice thing to have you know and uh considering the shifting i have to do on this the, uh, the variable speed over here is uh you know actually uh, pretty nice so there's alternatives um i uh know the difficulty of the inch metric uh, situation and the only thing I can think of is go with the hard inch type but if, if that's not uh, uh, heavy enough if, the, if, if that's not gonna do the part you want uh, then uh, you probably uh, be better off finding a, a weight that cuts metric you know and uh, that's considerably less money than uh, been the extra price of the uh, inch metric feature on this that I'm going to demonstrate pretty soon but the temperatures are elevated here and, I'm, and I want to kind of put the machine through a few uh, spaces and it, it'll likely uh, shut off because it's uh, set up to run at 68 degrees you know like precision instruments are and it is probably about 78 degrees <laughs> right now. So probably, uh, you know, the next day or two, I will uh, get back on the dish. And uh, I hope I hope you guys are going to have a great week. I'm going to be pretty busy with things and probably come up with uh, more things to uh, talk about. So uh, you guys uh, take care of yourself. And uh, I wanted to mention a uh, very close uh, relative of mine ended up in a hospital and uh, if you end up in the hospital these days, you got to really take care of yourself. Kind of like they operate on you, you got to get up and walk, you know, and uh, really participate in your own recovery, okay? So think about that, you know, survive. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Okay, here's the pump off that press. Um, when is that uh, Robert's uh, recovery yard over there? I, I believe I stuck my head in the shed there and there's at least two or three uh, 80 or 100 ton presses he had in there. I mean, he's got some other building and there's other presses. And this one here's a 50 ton and it, it's been pretty good but I started to run into some things that I needed something heavier. So I don't know, I might... Uh, talk to Robert about uh, um, getting a bigger, bigger press. 
But uh, this one here would be more ideal for a smaller shop than those larger ones he had. I'd make room for it to get a, another 50 tons. And I've got a bunch of press tricks I want to show you too. What metal does under pressure. Let's see here. Get this off. Almost got it. Now, this is very old. You can see, maybe you can make it out. It's got the um, workforce green. Now, this is uh, out of the old Air Force Base here, probably uh, as is uh, a lot of those other presses that Robert had there. See if I can get that off. There we go. And it's probably got rope packing in it. This has got a little bit bent. See if I can work it off. There we go. I'm being very cooperative. Trying to get it against that jaw there. I think it's coming. This is my lightweight vice. I'm going to get that heavy one back uh, uh, in here. Six inch. Uh, there we go. Yeah, see that? Let's see if we can get that out. And there it is. So, that's an old uh, um, leather cup, is what that is. And we'll see about uh, what I'm going to do there. I'm not sure. Looks like, you know, it comes off like faucet washers. I could stick, um, I could stick like a poly pack on. If I wanted to, and I might do it. Just do something like that. With the bore, the bores, I think, is okay. So now down in there, there should be a ball, and uh, we'll get a little better angle here. 